Hi everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to follow along the journey of making this dress in real time with me, both on Instagram and YouTube, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You get to choose how much to pledge per month and you will receive live updates both on my close friends Instagram stories and access to all of the YouTube videos right now. Hope you enjoy the video. So I've cut out my new bodice pattern pieces. Um, I'm using the cotton, apparently this is cotton canvas, but I'm pretty sure it was um, cotton twill on the website that I bought it from, but it's quite a heavyweight, um, durable, non-stretch cotton. And um, I don't actually have much of this fabric left, so I'm hoping that this mock-up will turn out well enough that I can rip it apart and then use it as the actual base layer of fabric for my actual um, bodice. So here I've got the modified back piece. If I show you the original pattern piece, um, what I've done is obviously cut it on the fold and I've also deepened the back neckline quite a bit. So you can see that it extends really far down. Um, I am going to perhaps have to narrow this part down further, um, the part that starts at the waist and goes down. Um, and then at the shoulder, I've made the shoulder piece extend upwards so it goes on the shoulder rather than off the shoulder. So that's the back piece. Um, the front and side pieces are more or less the same as what they were before. Um, the only difference is that they've been lengthened at the waist, especially at the side seams, because that was too short on me for the first mock-up. And I've extended the center front outwards three inches, just all the way, um, so I can modify it when I try it on myself. And um, yeah, obviously the shoulder seam is on the shoulder rather than off. So those are the modifications I've made. I'm going to now sew all of these pieces together and I'm going to use a quite a long stitch length um, so I can easily rip out the stitches later on because I'm hoping to use this for my actual bodice. So we'll see how I go. Um, that's where I'm at and I'll just show you how much of this fabric I have left over after cutting out those pieces. This is what I've got left over. I mean, I probably could cut out some extra pieces if I need them, like I could cut out an extra side, the side bodice pieces or the back bodice piece, but perhaps I won't have enough fabric here for the front bodice piece considering how large it is. Um, yeah, so that's what I've got left over. Um, I've written down all of my modifications that I need to do so I remember and I hope this goes well. Here's the new bodice. Um, I've just put it on outside in, no, inside out, yes. <laughs> um, and I am now going to like make adjustments, pin it, um, figure out what I need to alter on this. Um, and yeah, so as you can see it's much bigger. There's plenty more space to work with in the center front. Um, even the shoulder parts are loose. And the back seems to be fitting a little bit better, um, but I will have to make some adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I will pop back in with an update after I've done that. Okay, so I've made some minor adjustments, um, well just markings to make the adjustments later on. Um, so what I know that I'm going to do is take off some of this excess center front stuff um, because this is, is, isn't needed. Um, I am going to lower the neckline and I'm going to bring these shoulder pieces upwards a bit so they won't fall off the shoulder too much and I am going to have to shorten the shoulder straps because they're too long at the moment. As for the side bits, I think I am going to chop that part off eventually um, because I don't want this bodice to extend over 
the hips. Um, and then as for the back, I don't think I can really show you, but the back is fine for now. I think it will be better once I've made some of the adjustments to like the shoulders and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make these adjustments. So snip off the excess material and sew in the places where I need it to be sewn and then it will be time for another fitting. So it's it's coming along, it's just taking a little bit of time to get this bodice fitting right. And the other thing is, I'm not sure if I should even bother including boning within this bodice, um, at least for the where the darts are. I'm definitely going to have boning in the center front and perhaps in the center back, but I don't know about these side bits. I'm not sure if it needs it because it seems to be laying fine right now. And I feel like if I add cable ties <laughs> as boning in here, then it will make it, I don't know. I keep thinking it will make it look funny somehow. I don't know. But yeah, it's coming along. It's just taking a while. Hello, it's now the, what, what date? 11th? 11th, 11th, 11th of July, I believe, yeah, and I have not touched the bodice, and I just tried it on over my corset, and uh, I don't know how I feel about it, I don't like it, but I don't want to change too much of this anyway, because I'm scared that if I cut off too much, or sew other places, um, then I won't like it at all. <laughs> um, so I think what I'm going to do is unpick all of these seams and I'm just going to cut out the satin layer following the pieces that I have here um, as a guide and I'm just going to continue working on the bodice um, and make it up as I go along um, because I just don't think I'm going to get a pattern down that I like before I even start on cutting out the satin layer. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead, cut out the satin layers and start working on the bodice and whatever it turns out to be is whatever it turns out to be. So I've just finished unpicking all of my bodice pieces. Um, so I've also made a few markings with blue chalk as to um, where I need to sew seam lines. Um, so you can see that this one here is the center back um, seam line, so that's where the blue chalk is, and then that excess fabric, I'm just going to leave that as is, um, just in case I need to make more adjustments um, in future. So here I've got the remainder of my pink satin fabric. Um, this is the same fabric that I used for the skirt, and I'm literally going to trace these, all of these um, white cotton pattern pieces onto my pink satin fabric and join them together um, and then treat them as one layer and sew the bodice that way. So yeah, I'm going to cut out my pattern pieces now out of the pink satin fabric and I will get back to you once I've done that and then we'll see what I do next. I've just finished um, cutting out all of my satin pieces and um, what I did was I cut them on the fold and I have one for the center front, the back and also the side piece as well um, and that way by cutting them on the fold I don't have to cut out six pieces, I can just cut them out three times because they're on the fold. Um, now I am going to take this over to the ironing board because some of my pieces are a little bit wrinkled. Um, and the other thing that I need to do is, so some of these pieces, um, especially this one here, has a lot of chalk markings on, so I'm going to remove that the same way that I did um, on the skirt pieces, which is just to use a damp sponge and just wipe away the chalk markings, and that should be good. Oh, and one more thing, you would have noticed that um, I've cut my satin pieces a little larger than my 
cotton pieces and that's because the satin just likes to slip around a bit more and until I actually based the two layers together um, I would want that satin layer to be a bit larger and then at the armholes I've made it quite a bit larger um, simply because I feel like the armhole part is going to be tricky and I definitely want excess fabric to work with until I'm absolutely sure how I want it to be. So each of my pieces now have been um, arranged so that each cotton piece has a um, satin counterpart and the way that I've just laid them on top of one another is um, my cotton layer is facing so that all of the blue chalk markings are facing towards me and then for the satin layer underneath um, I've oh those ones are actually back to front um, I've actually I want to do this so that the good side which is this side is facing away from me and this is the wrong side and against the wrong side of the satin I want the side of the cotton layer which has none of the chalk markings so then all the chalk markings are facing towards me so if I do the same thing with this piece here I want the good side of the satin to be facing away from me and then on top I'm going to lay down the cotton layer with the chalk marking side facing towards me. And now I'm going to take this to the ironing board and I'm going to iron all of the pieces. Um, so like, for example, I would take this piece, put it on the ironing board and then iron across the top of the cotton layer just so I um, don't ruin the satin fabric. And the other thing I need to do is remove the chalk markings. Oh, and that is remove the chalk markings on the satin layer, not the chalk markings on the cotton layer, obviously, because I still need those. So I've just finished ironing all of my bodice pieces and as you can see I've got the right side of the satin layer facing upwards to me um, and I'm just I've just laid them out like this so I can see if there are any marks or anything that I need to still remove. Unfortunately there are some spots like this where I can't move that um, but there will be a chul overlay or netting overlay over the top of the bodice so I'm hoping, hoping it will disguise anything like that. Um, the other thing... Um, no, there wasn't any other things that I needed to mention. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to watch a movie or something and hand baste all along the edges of each of these panel pieces um, yeah, so pretty much the same way I did the interlining, I think it's called interlining, of the skirt. So if you go back to like the first, one of, it's like in one of the first three videos where I did this exact same process where I had a cotton layer um, with the satin layers and I went around all of the skirt edges um, and hand basted them down. That's exactly what I'm going to do with all of these bodice pieces now. Hi guys, so it's now the 2nd of August and I've got three things on my mind. The first thing is the train ruffle um, with all the tack stitching. I did not end up doing anything last night, so that is still just on the floor in the bedroom and I'll probably get around to doing a bit of that each night for the rest of the week. Um, the second thing is the hoop skirt. I don't know if I mentioned it, on video but 
I did buy a cheap hoop skirt from AliExpress and that's what it looks like with the skirt on top, no train ruffle and no petticoats and I really don't like the shape from the front but I really do like the shape from the back. So what I'm thinking of doing is modifying that hoop skirt so it has a more flat front. Um, I was contemplating whether or not to do that today but the third thing on my mind is that I've decided to come back to doing the bodice. So um, I had all of the pieces just uh, lying there on the chair for about two or three weeks now and I've neglected it long enough and I really do think it's time to get back to doing the bodice. Now I just watched um, Nikki Liam's video on YouTube about her 1830s bodice and yeah I think that's been very helpful for me to figure out how the bodice goes together because I've not actually ever made one of these bodices before. Um, so yeah I'm just going to follow the instructions that came with the bodice pattern. So if I can get that up on my computer. Mm. Where is it? Instructions. This one here. Truly Victorian 1860s ball gown bodice. And I'm just going to follow these instructions as well as look at um, Nikki Liam's video on the making of her 1830s bodice. And um, hopefully this goes smoothly. I'm hoping I will have some sort of bodice by the end of today. Um, it's currently a quarter past one in the afternoon, so hopefully by like five o'clock I will have something. I hope this works out. So I finished sewing up all of the seams of the bodice, including the shoulder seams. Um, I didn't really pay too much attention to um, making all of the seams nice and neat. And even the darts, um, like I didn't, I sort of just guesstimated where I needed to sew the darts. Um, they're sort of curved, but mostly straight lines. Um, and then all around here, like I did have some blue chalk markings from the mock-up, um, but 
because the mock-up was a fail anyway. Um, I just sort of sort of followed the blue lines but wasn't too particular about following it exactly. Um, if I turn this to the right side, um, you can see how imprecise my sewing is. So this is the center back seam. Um, you can see that the distance between the side back panels to the center back panels differs on both sides. Um, I had some blue chalk markings for the shoulder seam, um, which I just followed and I just sewed really big, um, really big stitches along there with the machine so I can rip them out if I need to because I am not sure about the shoulder seams or, at all. Um, so yeah, um, I will put this on um, just to show you the fit. Um, I'm hoping that it worked out okay because I don't want to do this again. <laughs> so here, here's what the bodice looks like on. Um, I'm not wearing it with a corset or anything and I am trying to hold it closed with my hand. Um, I'm fine with it. I mean, it will do. and. <laughs> There is quite a bit of wrinkling going on, but keep in mind that I'm not wearing a corset under this at the moment, and it also has absolutely no boning in it, and obviously no proper closures. Um, seam allowances have not been trimmed, so obviously the armholes are a lot bigger than they would usually be, as in, they're, sorry, smaller? I, I, I don't know what I mean, but like, yeah, the seam allowances have been trimmed off to where the actual edges will be. Um, so even like how deep this goes in the front, it might not go that deep. So yeah, um, but you can see that there's quite a bit of overlap um, between the two center front panels, which is what I want. Um, so I've got that extra fabric to work with. I will see what I can do to show you the back. And that is as much as you're going to get for the back of the bodice. Um, I'm, not, I'm not pulling it taut from the front, um, but yeah, you can still see that there's wrinkling in the back because there's no boning, um, and I'm quite happy with the V shape in the back. It's not too deep, I don't want it to be super deep, but it's deep enough to have an actual V shape. Um, I think I'll try this on with the corset now. And here's how the bodice looks over the corset. I'm a lot happier with the fit over the corset, you can just already see how the shape is so much straighter um, and like obviously there's still warping and lumps and bumps of the fabric but that will be all good once the boning is in the actual bodice I hope <laughs> um, I don't know what's going on at the tops of the darts though they look a bit funny but that will it, it, it looks okay like I'm fine with it I'm not it's not something that I'm going to obsess over and fix up. Um, I, don't, I can't, <laughs> let me show you the back. Can you see the back? Anyway, um, I can actually cut the V in the back deeper if I want, so I will probably do that. Not right now, but eventually. Um, but the thing I'm not sure about is the little pointy end part at the center back. Um, the part where it will cover over the top of the skirt. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Anyway, that's the bodice so far. 